Hello, this is Richard White, and uh, we're going to be taking a few moments today to write a Python program. Not so interested in the actual contents of the program as uh, we are in the workflow that goes with that uh, program writing process. So um, we're not going to be using an integrated development environment or anything like that. I'm just going to be using a terminal. Uh, today I'm using iTerm. And uh, I'm going to use a very common uh, code writing setup here. I'm actually going to split the screen in two. On the left side, this is where I'll be using Vim to actually write my program. It's going to be a number guessing program. And uh, on the right side, I'm going to be running that program. So I'll get a chance to type Python, have Python run my number guessing program. Had, haven't actually written the program yet, so it's probably not a surprise that I'm getting an error message there. Um, so let's jump in and start writing the program. Um, we'll begin with the usual shebang here and user bin environment. If you're not familiar with what these are, you will be soon enough. I'm also going to put a little doc string in here, three quotes, and then the name of the program, and my name, and the date perhaps, and um, another little description maybe of the program. We'll go ahead and put all that in here. This program has the user guess uh, number between 1 and 100. Don't need to do anything more sophisticated than that right now. So we'll close out that doc string. The three quotes there uh, tell the uh, Python interpreter to ignore this stuff. It's just for purposes of the Python doc string or as a comment. Um, and then the, another typical thing that we do, we define a main function in a Python program. Um, before I get too far into this, I'm just going to make sure that everything's working the way I want it to. So there's my main function. When this program runs, as soon as I call the main function here, uh, that will tell Python, hey, go up here to this main function and start going through the list of commands in here. Right now there's only a single command, and execute those commands. Um, I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm going to use a, another little trick here uh, that's very common for Python programs. And again, if you're not sure what this is, then uh, you'll uh, learn about it at some point in the near future. So this basically just says, if somebody runs this program as a main program, then call the main function and go up and then execute these statements here. So that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and write that to a memory. We'll save that and then run over here and run that program and see what happens. So now when I run the guesser program, it prints out hello world as I thought it would. So that's pretty good. We've uh, made a good start here. Let's jump back uh, and start actually creating our real program then. Um, so in my main program, I guess what I need to do is have the user uh, enter their guess. Maybe I'll have a nice little print statement here. I suppose the very first thing I need to do is have the uh, program say what's going on. Uh, guess a number between 1 and 100. And I'll ask the user for information. Oh, let's have the computer um, come up with a number. Right now, I'm just going to call it random number. And we'll actually generate that as a random number later on. For right now, though, let's make it the number 35, just for testing purposes. And now let me have the uh, user enter their guess. Maybe we'll have a variable called user guess. And that's going to get the value. And we'll let them enter it just like that. And now how are we going to check to see what happens? If user guess is equal to, remember there are two equal signs there, random number, then we'll know they've guessed the number. So we can say print, you got it. And else, if they didn't get it, we'll say print, that's not it. This is a very rudimentary form of the program. We're going to be improving on this quite a bit in a few minutes. But uh, for right now, let's call that good and test it out. Let's hop over to the right side and run that program again and see what happens. Guess a number between 1 and 100. My guess is 50. That's not it. And this isn't a very exciting program because most of the time I'm just going to run it and it's going to tell me I didn't guess the number unless I magically get it one time. So. Uh, still a little bit of work we could do here. I guess I want to keep going, right? I want to keep looping through. I want to repeat this process of getting a guess until they actually do get the guess. They are they get the random number. So let me uh, tell you what, let me add a couple things in here. 
First thing I'm going to do, I think, is up at the top here, I'm going to add this ability. I'm going to say that um, found is equal to false. Found is going to be a flag variable. I'll make a comment about that here. Flag variable to see if they guessed it. The idea is we want to have the program keep track of whether or not they've found the variable, if they've guessed it or not. And so now that I've got this found variable set, what I can do is I can say if not found, in other words, if they haven't found it yet, then do all these things here. Well, then we'll go through this whole process. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, mark this whole block here. I need to go down and actually shove this whole block over. And so now if I haven't found this thing, I'm going to keep on going. Maybe I can even say, would it be appropriate to say, while not found, do all these things. And if they find it then, if they do manage to guess it, then in addition to saying print you got it, I'm also going to set found equal to true. That's a nice idea. Now we'll end up looping through this block here, these statements right here. We'll keep on going through until not found becomes false. In other words, until it is found. Let's try that out and see what that looks like. Run over to the other side and we'll see if we can run this. Clear that out. And I guess a number of 50. That's not it. Oh, I didn't write this. I need to save this program. There we go. 50. That's not it. Uh, 32. That's not it. 70. That's not it. 35. Got it. So that's working more or less the way we want it to. Um, I guess it still seems kind of random. I guess I'd like to give them a hint, don't you think? Uh, if they got it, that's OK. Found will still be equal true. Else, if they haven't found it, let me go down here and say, you know, I'm not just going to say print, that's not it. I'm going to check and say else if, and we can actually do that as an else if statement. There's a statement called else if. L if user guess is greater than the random number, then what are we going to do? We're going to tell them to guess lower. Else, and if it's not equal to and it's not greater than the random number, it must be less than the random number. We don't even need to check. We can just say else print guess higher. Good. Well, let's see how that works for us here now. Go ahead and write that and run over here and guess a number, 50. Guess lower, uh, 30. Guess higher, 37. Guess lower, 34. Guess higher, 35. You got it. Great functionality. This is the basic functionality here. It looks like the program's working more or less exactly how we want it to. I'm going to add one more thing in here. Um, well, I guess I really need to get that random number thing working, right? Up here, I've got this random number equals 35, and I need to set that so it actually is a random number every time I run through this. I'm going to pretend for a moment that I don't know anything about uh, random numbers in Python. How do you go about researching that kind of thing? Well, we've got a couple of strategies that we can use. One is to, uh, of course, check on the web. So it's a good idea to type in Python, random number, maybe random integer, since that's what I'm really interested in. And notice they've got some guesses for me there. Uh, generate pseudo random numbers. If I look through here and I, I want to get a random integer here, I can skim through and it looks like eventually I'll stumble onto something like random rand int, rand integer, which is, uh, oh, it looks like I passed it up here maybe. Uh, a random integer is exactly what I'm looking for. I can also search on the page here, integer, rand range, that looks kind of cool, rand int, oh, there it is, right there, that's what I'm looking for. So once I learn a little bit about this, another good place to learn is if you see any of these um, URLs that use Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow is a great source of answers for quick questions. You might even be able to find, although we don't want to do this, random number guessing game. We might even be able to jump in here and steal some code from somebody else. Guess my number, 1 to 100. I'm not going to go there because I want to learn about writing this program. but. Uh, 
So I've got that random rand int, and what I'm going to do now over on the right side is jump into the Python interpreter and check this out. The Python interpreter basically allows you to run programs or run statements to execute statements. Um, I know I need to import the random module. I can do things like print random.randint between 1 and 10 to see if that works the way I think it's supposed to. Uh, I need to spell it correctly, of course. And it looks like that's working kind of the way I want it to. It's printing some random numbers for me. Maybe I can even check it out for i in range 25. I'll get 1, 2, 3, 4. I'll print out a whole bunch of these numbers and see how that random process works. So there's 25 random numbers, and you can see it's going from between 1 and 10, all of them. So that seems to be working more or less the way I think it's going to. The Python interpreter is a great way to check out little uh, functions without actually writing a program. You wouldn't write a program in there, but you can check out functions real quickly. So let me uh, implement that in my program here. So I'm going to need to import the random module. And then in addition to that, instead of this random number here that I kept for debugging purposes, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and put a little uh, hashtag there to make that clear that that was, uh, that was just something I was working on for debugging only. Now I'm actually going to use my real random statement here, uh, random number is equal to random.randint 1 to 100. So now it's going to be the real deal. Let's see what happens. Go ahead and write that out and run the program and we'll see. Guess a number. Guess higher. It's already a different number there. Uh, 67. 61, sorry, 61, guess lower. Took me a few tries to get it, but uh, it looks like the program is working more or less the way I intended. So uh, there's some other modifications I could make to this program. Uh, one of the important ones that I'll include right in here, right here is to set up a few statements here, uh, comments. Initialize the program. I've tried to use good variable names as I'm going through, and so I've got lots of self-documentation going on here. Uh, maybe I'm going to also insert here a comment. Uh, run through the guessing process. And then at the very bottom down here, maybe I'll print a congratulations at the end of it all. Print congratulations. And goodbye. Print. Thanks for playing our game. Now, in a more extensive program, what we'd probably do is we take some of these little sections, the congratulations section, or the guessing process section, or the initialization section, and we'd put those in their own separate functions and have those called in sequence by the main function. But for now, I think we're in pretty good shape. So I hope this was useful for you. Thanks for watching.